The White House is threatening to veto Congress's proposed $3 trillion stimulus plan. The HEROES Act was crafted by House Democrats, and it provides nearly $1 trillion dollars to state and local governments. It also calls for another round of individual direct payments. House Republicans oppose the measure, citing concerns with its size, and it is not expected to pass the Senate. Meanwhile, on Friday, President Trump named a former pharmaceutical executive and a four-star general to lead Operation Warp Speed. They will now oversee the White House initiative to speed up the development of a coronavirus vaccine. The president said that there will be hundreds of millions of coronavirus vaccine doses available by the end of 2020. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. A massive scientific, industrial, and logistical endeavor unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. Its objective is to finish developing and then to manufacture and distribute a proven coronavirus vaccine as fast as possible. Again, we'd love to see if we could do it prior to the end of the year. We think we're going to have some very good results coming out very quickly. I have very recently uh, seen early data from a clinical trial with a coronavirus vaccine. And these data made me feel even more confident that we will be able to deliver a few hundred million doses of vaccine by the end of 2020. Uh, uh, and we will do the best we can, the best we can to do that. And I just want to make something clear. It's very important. Vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. And we're starting the process. Well, to talk about the president's remarks right there, Daniel Lippman joins me now. He's a reporter covering the White House in Washington for Politico. Daniel, the White House is threatening to veto the HEROES Act, even though it is not expected to pass the Senate. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has already said that another stimulus package is likely needed. Why the political games? Well, Democrats really want to get a lot of their liberal priorities passed, and they think that with the economy in such a horrible shape, they want to go big, uh, and they want to you know, help as many people as possible in their view. And so they can only do that if they have a large package. Uh, and so they say that Republicans are, are underestimating the size of this crisis, and they think that just because some Americans can go back to work and cities are reopening in states, uh, that doesn't mean that the economic pain is going to go away. A lot of those jobs are not coming back, and so uh, Democrats uh, want to try to make a deal uh, once Republicans kind of figure out what they want from this package, too. Well, we heard the president in that soundbite say that vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. Does this contradict what the administration's top health experts are saying? Well, it's not a complete contradiction because they haven't said the health experts have not said uh, you can't be back without without a vaccine. Uh, I think it's just Trumpian language where he wants to uh, get Americans moving again. Um, and he knows that the vaccine timeline is uncertain. We don't know uh, for sure how long it will last. Uh, and so I think uh, Trump uh, is not really saying that Fauci is wrong, at least in this area. I think uh, the doctors, they just want to caution Americans not to expect a vaccine right now, uh, and they want to continue to urge them to practice social distancing even when states do uh, are reopening. But, but wasn't the president saying that he was absolutely certain that there would be hundreds of millions of doses of the vaccine ready by the end of 2020? Is he hedging his bets? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think on that specific point, the doctors don't agree with him. Uh, they think that's pretty unlikely. Uh, we might get some uh, amount of vaccines, for, especially for essential workers. But it, it is a very long process to get a vaccine uh, approved and uh, for all the manufacturing to take place. And so this is not something that you can turn a switch uh, and, you know, all Americans can get uh, such vaccines. And so it's going to take a while, probably into uh, next year. 
All right, Daniel. The FDA is also warning of a possible accuracy concern with a rapid test from Abbott Labs. A study by NYU found that it could miss up to 48% of infections. That's the same test, though, Daniel, that the White House uses for the president and those in close proximity to him, right? How concerned is the White House about potential accuracy issues? Yeah, I think it is definitely a concern, but they also know that there are people coming to the White House every day and that they don't want to, uh, you know, you can't test someone the day before and maybe they get exposed overnight. And so it's the best thing they have right now. Uh, but I would imagine, and I think it's been reported, that the White House is also using other uh, tests uh, to keep the president uh, healthy and to keep him safe. But there is really no silver bullet even to protect the White House. Well, the CDC recently released a reopening guidelines for schools, restaurants, and mass transit. What more do we know about these guidelines and the timing of their release? So this had been uh, delayed for a couple weeks uh, as the White House wanted to trim back some of the guidelines. They thought it was too severe, too restrictive, uh, and wouldn't let businesses get back to normal. Um, and they also didn't want to prescribe uh, faith institutions about how they could operate. And so there's actually none, uh, no talk of, uh, you know, worship institutions or, you know, just churches or synagogues, mosques uh, in that new CDC guidelines. And um, they are much uh, less specific than earlier drafts. And so we could see more uh, CDC guidelines come out. Uh, but a lot of businesses, they, they needed those CDC guidelines to be published in the first place or else they couldn't safely reopen, um, especially with liability concerns, that being a huge uh, in the forefront of many uh, businesses' minds. Uh, the White House press secretary today criticized a pandemic response plan prepared by the Obama administration regarding PPE in the national stockpile. She said, quote, the cupboards were bare. How accurate is this? And um, is the Obama administration at fault for not having things better prepared for this pandemic? I think both sides are partly right here. Uh, the cupboards weren't bare because... Uh, there were there were million of millions of masks and there were thousands of ventilators. Some of them weren't properly maintained, um, and so the Obama administration didn't make this a huge priority in the last few years. And a lot of the stockpile was used in the Ebola, Ebola response, uh, and so they could have done a better job on that. But President Trump has been president for over three years, and so uh, if he has not been paying attention, or if his administration has not um, added to those stockpiles, that's on him. Uh, and so I think that's a point that you know, has to be made that it's not like he came into office a month or two ago where you can say uh, is, it was the Obama administration's fault. But, um, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, is both administrations' faults. And this one is the one in charge of the response now. And so they should have been more ready. All right, Daniel, you also have a new piece in Politico that takes a look at how the White House is struggling to define what success looks like in responding to the coronavirus pandemic. What more can you tell us? Yeah, so we talked to a number of White House officials and uh, allies of the president uh, to try to define a success uh, for them and, and what they are thinking. A lot of them wouldn't want to get into specific numbers of dead uh, and vaccines and testing. Um, and some of them are concerned that uh, Trump can't get reelected if you have 250,000 people uh, dead uh, by election day. Uh, we, one notable interview we had was with Senator Lindsey Graham, who said uh, if they keep it to 120,000 Americans, um, that kind of limits uh, the casualties in this war, uh, and that can uh, be some measure of success. But obviously, uh, you have you know millions of Americans who knew some of those victims and people. Uh, you know there are long-standing concerns uh, in terms of the health effects the long-term health effects if you have it. Uh, and so uh, it's hard for anyone to claim success when you've had you know, thousands of Americans, tens of thousands die uh, from this horrible illness. Definitely. I imagine that that is a tricky line when uh, the president's reelection campaign is looking at 
at celebrating um, when, <clears throat> when so many people have died. What are the Republicans saying about how the White House has been responding to the coronavirus outbreak? Well, they say that the response was slow in the early few months, um, first months of this disaster, but it's gotten better since. Uh, but if you talk to uh, people, they are still concerned that they're not taking it um, you know, seriously enough. There's not enough people uh, in the White House who can tell the president uh, to kind of speak truth, truth to power and say, you got to ramp up on X, Y, and Z. Uh, you got to invoke the Defense Production Act. Uh, and so this is something that uh, Republicans are still concerned about. Um, and, you know, the, President Trump is sometimes shell-shocked uh, at just how widespread the damage is, both in terms of health and the economy, you know, where he's presiding over uh, an economy that, you know, to, uh, you know, not too much of his, it was his fault that it's so bad, but a lot of people say that if he had moved faster, then we could have reopened quicker and that would have limited the economic damage. You already see uh, countries abroad um, kind of reopen faster or at least uh, have a better social safety net. Interesting to hear that break from Republicans, that criticism from Republicans uh, who had otherwise, before the pandemic, been walking so closely in lockstep with this White House. Daniel Lippman, thank you. Thank you.